name is Linda Quinn. I write under the name L.M. Quinn. And I'm reading from my story, The Red Lipstick, which is part of the anthology, You Don't Have a Clue, Latino Mystery Stories for Teens. The sound of car horns and screeching tires told me there was another traffic jam outside on Whittier Boulevard. I waited for the crunch of metal, but it didn't happen. Instead, Norteño music started up from the liquor store next to us, drowning out the traffic noise. My papi yelled at me from inside the garage to print out the Lopez invoice for the work done on Mr. Lopez's blue Chevy. I found the invoice in three seconds and printed it out, something my papi and his workers couldn't do. Computers were a mystery to them, just as fixing a car was to me. I also was good at finding things like lost keys and mommy's watch when my nose wasn't buried in a book or staring at CSI or Hercule Poirot on the TV. I adored the fussy gordito Belgian detective Poirot with the awesome gray brain cells he used to track down and catch all of the bad guys who came his way. There was no gray in his brand of justice though. If you did the crime, you paid. Logico, no? Speaking of mystery, there was a real live one happening at my papi's garage right here in Montebello, California. Auto parts had gone missing over the last three months and it was costing my papi money he couldn't afford to lose. Since my first day of work last Monday, no parts had been taken. My papi said that was good luck. He was glad to have me here. Working at the garage this summer will help your papi save money until he hires a new bookkeeper in the fall, my mommy said the evening before I started working at the garage. I protested at first because my summer school drama class started mid-June, but papi would let me take time off work to attend. She thanked me for agreeing to help out with one of her special lleno de amor hugs that made me forget I was a 15-year-old gordita morenita who wore glasses and braces when I longed to be like the brilliant but chubby Belgian detective. Nobody noticed how much you weighed when you were famous. You got the invoice, Yoli? Sergio, my papi's favorite worker, walked up to the counter with Mr. Lopez shuffling after him in his baggy, bay win baggy beige windbacker and dirty white sneakers. Sergio had worked for my papi for eight years, never missing one day for sick leave or for sleeping off a cruda every Monday like the other workers. Many of papi's customers asked for Sergio to work on their cars. Everything he fixed stayed fixed. I nodded and handed Sergio the invoice so he could explain the charges in detail. While they were talking, I ticked off on the inventory screen the auto parts that had been used for Mr. Lopez's car, noting that the total inventory didn't balance because of the stolen parts. I waited for Mr. Lopez to leave and followed Sergio into the garage. A s sharp smell of oil and sweat filled my nose forcing me to breathe through my mouth as I headed to the vending machines in the back wall. I wanted a soda and chips to keep me going until my two o'clock lunch hour today. La chismosa gordita stuffing her face again. The comment from one of the workers was low, but loud enough for me to hear and bring a warm flush to my face. Yeah, déjala en paz, said Sergio, loud enough to be heard over the off again, on again of the hydraulic jack. Sergio, father of five girls and with a wife suffering from MS in a wheelchair, came to my defense as he often had since I started working here, always telling me to ignore the guy's comments and how I was going to be una señorita bien bonita one day. But I wanted to be a private detective. And I'm hoping that you'll read the story and find out if I can do it.